Hello and welcome to Tights TV. Uh, Neil is here and I've also got Tom on. Tom, it's been a while, but as always, it's great to have you on, mate, and have your thoughts and insights into a few things what's been happening over the last couple of weeks. Nice uh, to be on, Neil. Thank you. I've um, had plenty on, so it's been uh, it's been busy and uh, what's happening. But, yeah, just saying there, we'd be a bit better if we'd uh, got yeah. results today. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it, it's been a while, uh, so we'll just have a bit of a recap. I mean, results in the last couple of weeks, to be fair, Tom, they haven't been too bad. You know, I think for me, it started away at Ipswich when we drew to a piece, came back twice, and obviously we went on back room at uh, Sheffield Wednesday, drawing at Port Vale, and then you've got Cambridge, Charlton Games, Fleetwood. For me, it seemed to be a time that was starting to get that, that bit of understanding and togetherness for you, and then... It happened, it transpired against Exeter, but what were your thoughts on this run that we went on, this unbeaten run? Well, we had the conversation that we had with me and my dad yesterday where we were talking about um, where we were at league and what position we were in. And he mm. says, he just turned and looked at me and says, we'd have, we'd have took that up after this many games. And I said, yeah, absolutely, yeah. we would. We would have taken, we would have snapped your hand off, for, or a lot of people would have snapped your hand off for it. Um, mm. And I think that the run that we've been on has been very good but as we've said that this uh, th this league like anybody can beat anybody we've said it before I said yeah. well, what happens anybody can beat anybody you're going to get on runs you're going to get on thing, things going like that we've got to bear in mind that this we've got to bear in mind that we're we're still trying to make up for last season we're still trying to do those things not everything's going to be perfect not everything's going to be great um and the most frustrating thing for me yesterday was, more than anything, I think, more than the performance even, was fans getting on the players' backs um, and some fans booing at the end. I mean, what yeah. what 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 mm. planet are we on? We've just mm. we've gone six unbeaten. We've had to have a full. We've we've changed the full team. Yeah. Of us. I know you've got. <coughs> players, I know you've got a few players who are still there. Um, but you've switched the team around, you switched the tactics around, you switched the manager around, you've changed nearly everything. We've had six games unbeaten and you boo them off when they lose. Yeah, I, I just, I, I can't, I, I can't get my head around it. I, it really, really frustrates me because it's just, as a player, you must think, just cut me a bit of slack here, you know what I mean? Cut us a bit yeah. of slack. I think that yesterday was poor from, st yesterday was poor from start to finish. It was a bad day, bad day at the office and players were poor and, there were times in the game where you just thought that sums it up. It was one of them. Mm -hmm. it, it was one of them games. And to be fair to Exeter, they came and they executed a game plan and the early goal set the tone for the game for me. But I also think that we've got to give them a huge amount of credit because I thought they were really good. I thought they controlled the game. I thought number eight was, uh, for them, Collins, I think it was, was absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm. Uh, their left back, left wing back. I thought he were very good. Sparks, Jack Sparks. Yeah. Um, they had some really good players there. They they, they 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 did a good job. They got a new manager. They probably changed a bit of stuff that they were doing. Um, we might have had a bit of hangover from the Thomas incident because I think that's probably affected a lot of players. I'm not using it as an excuse, mm. but we're not just going to turn up and just win games. So fans need to get that out their head straight away. Just because we've done well, and just because we've you know, won at Wednesday, won at done all these things, you mm. can't, can't do it. You can't. Yeah, I mean, for me, I get back with Thomas because it sounds it sounds like it's a, a double fracture. So you know that is <coughs> just sound nasty, and hope he you know recovers well from it and that. Because I thought I, I, I kind of get it that people are saying that we missed Luke Thomas and this other, but for me, we've still got other options here, yeah. and. You know, you've got such as your Josh Martin, you've got your additional play via Forest Green. We could have probably pushed Benson up there and brought Luke Connell back. So I don't get that kind of thing that, oh, we've listened to Luke Thomas. One one player shouldn't make a difference in the team, but I understand it. We're it's playing well, so we're going to miss that player. But in the same respect, is that when Luke Connell picked up his injury, we're still doing decent in the league and we we're winning. So we can't use that as an excuse kind of thing. Mm. And I get where you're coming from that way, but when at fans, I mean, I get that it was, it, it was a poor performance rate from, from first, well, I mean, seconds when it was scored, we in, what were it, 90 seconds, something like that? Yeah. This yeah. minute. And 
like you say, it's a set tone at game. I was impressed with their right wing back and all their number two because we were going for it all the time. And that's where yeah, both, their wing, back, from. both yeah. their wing backs were excellent. I, I just thought all round, and, and we focused, I think we probably focused too much on um, Brown because Giovanni Brown, he's got most of their goals. I think we focused on him, and actually, Stansfield had a field there because he yeah. was left in acres of space on lots of. So we focused on him quite a bit, and rightfully so because obviously he's done a good job. They had pace going forward. Mm. They, they had, um, I think they only had two shots on target, but they only needed two shots on they target. Yeah. They controlled the game pretty much. Um, but I, I, the one thing I think we missed, and we've said this before, and the games which I think we've missed it in are the games where we've dropped points. So Wickham was a good example, mm. and Port Vale was a good example, and yesterday was a good example. We still haven't got, for me, a leader on the pitch. We still mm. haven't got, uh, and I, I like, Mads Anderson, but Mads Anderson yesterday played like he did when he first started, when he was having a shot. Yeah. He was soft, he was indecisive, he did all those things, but he's been great for us. So there's, it's not slagging him off, it's just that he had one of them yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't, we haven't got a leader, we haven't got an older head, we still haven't got that person who actually, because we were trying to get to grips with what they were doing in the first half, and they were all, me and Dave, who sits next to us, we were saying, they're looking at each other as if to say, who's picking up who here, who's yeah. going there. And there was no cohesion at all in the first half. And you can't afford 45 minutes of not knowing what's going on and not knowing what we're doing um, against any team. Because what they will do is they'll control a game and they'll manage a game because that's what that's what teams will come and do. Um, what For me as well, I don't know about you, Tom, what were bold for me and what I what acts off and full credit to Duff is that just after half an hour, he took Norwood off and tried changing it. It did, and like he said in his uh, after match press uh, press conference, says, well, "What's point getting to half time? I need to do something." Yeah. And when I was looking at Duff on sidelines, I animated him on going. I'm thinking, like what you were saying, God, I wish you were on pitch because you want back up middle of pitch to get your players yeah. doing what you want to do. And like what you said, it's that leader that that someone who's going to give him a kick up ass and like I said, get this and get and direct him and. Uh, cohesion but what I see in Duff is that I wish we had an ounce of that on pitch. Yeah absolutely and that's and and again that's it that's the the thing of that's the thing of um controlling situations. The Port Vale game were a great example. In fact the Port Vale game were a better example than either of these two because we we should have seen that game out. Yeah. No question. No question. It's one of the biggest two points dropped I've I've seen for a long time. We there was, shouldn't have been a, they shouldn't have even had a sniff. No. But that was poor game management. And that's where your teams, your Wickham's exit yesterday, they'll come and they will manage games and they will do what they need to do. And you can't afford to be switched off in the first minute. Because we lost ball in midfield. We lost the oh, ball in, yeah. in a really real it was in a positive position for us. Aitchison had it. Um it could have gone out wide. We didn't have an option and we lost it and it, it came from there. But I think we've got to be again. We've still got to be realistic. We've spent no money. We've done. We've we've mm. we've got we've got a team. And we've got a manager who we all really really appreciate, which is nice, refreshing. Because I think a lot of well, there will be others people who don't appreciate. There always is, but I think the majority of people appreciate that we've got a really good manager and we've got somebody who, if we're all saying that it's not just going to happen straight away, then we can't all throw our teddies out of the pram when we lose at home to Exeter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If they come and do a good job and they play a good game and we're not on form and we're poor, then we've got to hold his hands up and say we're poor and go next game. Do you know what I mean? There's no point in saying, oh, this is a disgrace. Let's boo them off. Let's shout every time. Cadden came off yesterday and got dogs abuse around us. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself that that's, that, that's no good for him, is it? He's not... <laughs> no matter same way with Kane and all, because I know when he come off as well, he just wants to jog off and get off the pitch because he was getting some verbals. I'm thinking... Look, we've had a, he's had a bad day at office. All team, have to be fair, you know, and for picking man at match art and that, it was, I don't think you could really pick a man at match art because I don't think anybody really stood out kind of thing. You know, it was were, it were a bad overall team performance, wasn't it? You know, so... There wasn't one player who covered himself in glory yesterday. No. We've gone on a six-match unbeaten run. We've done a decent job this season. We've got players, we've still got, for all the talk about changing the philosophy and getting a few older heads and stuff. We've still got a very young team. We've still you, got play, players who think, are in as well. Do you think then, Tom, this is a good one then. So after, obviously, you know, it were a bad day office against Exeter. Do you think then 
Because Duff said there's like there's still a few egos knocking about, and we need to say, look, we can't just turn up and expect, you know, against no disrespect to X to, um, you know, your part bales. And, well, they've come up, they've come up, both, they've come up both them sides, so it's not been disrespectful. Uh, us thinking that we ought to be winning that game, that's not been disrespectful. That's just how how it will be viewed because they've come up, we've come down. That's exactly how it will be viewed. So it's not disrespectful, but. They're not going to lie down. They're not going to, yeah. are they? They're not. They're just not. Um, so, yeah, one of them. Do you think it's one of them games where, a bit like the Wiccan game, but it, it, it's probably had to happen sooner or later for us to like have a, a bit of kick up ass and a, a reset and a rethink and say, look, let's go on another six game on beta only. At all. Because, yeah. like you said, I mean, we lost in Batman yesterday. We're still in. I'm still in playoffs at the moment. I know we're getting ready to send. We've only played about 12 games in the league or something like that. Do you think that we've had to have something like this to have, have a re-evaluate to say, look, we need to refocus because we're still in, we're still in, right, you know, we're fifth or sixth from top, not sixth or fifth from bottom. Yeah. Let's regroup, refocus, let's move on to the next game. Tricky one away at Bolton. Well, I think I sometimes do. I think mm. sometimes do. And, uh, and you know, like when you've got, you get a bit, carried away and you get a bit saying oh well I expect us to win today and you, you look at you just look at how the momentum shifts I know that there were a couple of polls on I don't know whether it were you or yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, bands of polls or whatever and it, I think it were like 99% said bands yeah, yeah. will win and that's not a that's that's fine that's good a bit of confidence it's good it's good that we're doing well but we have got a rain of self and we're not world beaters Mm. We're not beat us by a long stretch, and we have got things that uh, we have got things where it's not going to go to point. I think it'd be harder playing at home than it is away. Yeah, but we've said that before because I, at home you've got teams who have got a set game plan. the The onus is on the teams at home to make something happen in it always. Mm. Mm. Um, so these team, you kids, your teams can't sit back at home. Really, they've got a, they've got to, they've got a. They've got to show some kind of impetus, and, and, and us at home, I, I always think the stuff that the, I always think the stuff that affects the way. If we start slow at home, you can generally tell our game's going to go after ten minutes at Oakwell. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, more and more and more, you watch first ten minutes, and you might as well you might you, you can you can predict what's going to happen, or you can you can look at how the game's going to go and. I think we've got to get away from that. I think we're going to have to be a little bit stronger than that. We're going to have to be a little bit more cute than that as well. Because um, we've we've got we've if we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have games against all different types of teams. We're gonna have games against. So we're kidding ourselves if we don't think Accrington, Barker, yeah. all they're all gonna do the same. So yeah, I mean, just going back to, I mean, I'm looking at fixtures like now. Obviously, we've got Doncaster in Peace Trophy, but. When when I'm looking at fixtures like now, from after that we've got Bolton away, Markham away, Lincoln at home, Forest Green at home, Shrewsbury away, and MK Dons at home, and that's like into November because only two games in November. So when you look at Ben Vier, you know Bolton away. I mean they've had a, a few ups and downs, but they're up there amongst it. Markham away again can be another tricky one, but Lincoln at home and Forest Green at home. And like what you said, we us being at home <laughs> against us that kind of the pressure's on it. Then we've got two away games followed by two home games. The pressure's back on us because if they haven't gone well in the away games, there's even more an onus to get back on that winning, uh, you know, momentum kind of thing. It just worries me a bit that if we do look like if we do lose Bolton, if we don't pick up three points against Markham, and you get to that, it just worries me how quickly we can. We, yeah. we can turn, do you know what I mean? We've got to stick with this. We've got we've got a really, really, really good manager. We've got mm. some good players, but we need to build on it and we need to strengthen. And we've got to strengthen and we've got to strengthen in January if we can. Um, what, what, what what areas would you strengthen? Or would you like to see strengthening then, Tom? Well, I think the Thomas one's going to be a big loss. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we need a striker. We need a striker who plays in it. So you've got... You, you've got up front, I still think we've got really limited options because if Cole has an Cole has an off day, Norwood, yeah, I like Norwood because he's an old school kind of player and he's, he's this that and other. But but like yesterday, he looked like a pub league player yesterday. Yeah. 
He, uh, and that's no disrespect to him. He's, he's, he's an older head and he does great with his ability and he, and he can get goals. And I think he'll be really, really important in terms of bringing him on like he has done away and he's done yeah. stuff. And he's a good, he is a good player. For an impact uh, player kind of thing. In terms of, you looked at what they had yesterday going forward, they had uh, sharp players up front. They had players who, were, who could uh, run into the corners, who could yeah. trap down, who could support the man. Um, twist and turn and they always had the one thing that they had that we didn't have yesterday is they always had an out ball so yeah. they always had no matter where how pinned in the way or whatever they had an out ball um and i don't think we so Aitchison yesterday looked lost to me um mm -hmm. so i think we need to strengthen in that area definitely i i still think that um obviously a couple of results have have, have masked a bit of that uh we i think we, we do need a striker um and we do need a a more creative player. I'm hoping that Martin steps up, to be honest. Um, yeah. I've not, not seen him do that yet, but obviously it's difficult. You can't just come in and just expect him to rip it up. Um, mm. But, yeah, I, I just I still want to see an older head. I know it sounds I know it, like a, not a, not an older head, somebody who's 36 who's just trying mm. to pick up words, but somebody who can um, guide Dictate you. play. Yeah, and just be, and just be that um, game management player person uh whether it's a uh, you know in the middle of the park or in defense or wherever it is I, I really do think we're crying out for that um but i it's difficult because i do think we have got i do think we have got good players i think we have got players yeah. who are who are players who other teams would i always try and look at it whether would other teams want our players and the answer is yeah mm. they would they'd, they'd want they, they would want bensons and they would want your players like that but again, yesterday, Benson and Kane have an off day. We look terrible. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Set me Benson had one of his worst games, one of his worst games I've seen him play um, definitely this season. Um, and Kane looked a bit lost as well. So that's your, that's your centre of midfield. You can't afford to have an off day. But we had 11 on an off day, didn't we? we a, <laughs> yeah, we had 11 on an off day. And it was like, a, you know, I kind of looked to it. After that game, I mean, I was walking away with my son and we were just scratching his heads thinking it would it were like the manner of it as well. You, you kind of, you take a, a loss on chin at home if you think, you know what, you've gone down, you get it, you're all. Yeah, but yeah. I think it was a manner and how it happened and walking away, I'm thinking, I, I, you know, how can you put a, a shift in such as a way at Fleetwood and stuff like that? It, at home, it's like so frustrating and, and like why and are you these, asking questions you know these, these players these players are playing at league one for a reason mm. they're not mm. consistent they can mm. do amazing things they can do brilliant things they can all do we've seen stuff that benson does we've seen stuff that yeah. we've all scored some wonderful goals no would flick one another week they can all do yeah. it yeah. it's about consistency and consistent mm. levels and that's your difference between a I've seen players who play on a Sunday league with one in top corner from 30 yards. You can, they can, they've got the ability to do it. It's a case of how consistently you can do it, your mentality and your way of doing that. And that I think that's what Duff's trying to get across. True. To say that the intensity has got to be there all the time. It can't just be, oh, we turn up and we are, and our ability just allows us to just go and win a game. Because it doesn't. Because they're that well drilled. We're talking about every day of the week, they're talking, who does this? The, the, they know which way they put the socks on. You know what I mean? They know everything yeah, about yeah. every player. They know they know everything. So we can't we can't allow it to we can't allow it to just be a case of we should be winning this today because we've done all right. And I, I do think sure. that the, I do think the Luke Thomas thing yesterday will have stuck a few of them because I think it'll have been a it always is, isn't it? It mm. always when there's a bad injury or something, a bit of a freak injury or there's something like that. And they know that Thomas has been good as well. Yeah. Um, and they seem quite together. The group seem quite together. So I, I would imagine that it has shook some of them. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, that's football. That's life, isn't it? Things things get thrown at you, don't they? So we've got to deal with it. We've got to move on. Do we, I think we'll leave it on that. I mean, a good you know, a good analysis, that Tom. And like you say, you, you know, we're on about like a loss or defeat against Exeter Manor in it. And when you put it into context, you've got a, a young kid there what's got a double fracture, bad injury. And like you say, you've got to, that's life, that's, you know, got to move on and deal with it. Um, so, Tom, as, as always, I appreciate you taking your time out. I know you've been 
right busy and everything like that. So always great content, good talk, mate. I've really appreciated taking your time out. Cheers, Neil. Anytime. Thanks, no mate. No problem. Uh, everybody watching, please like, subscribe, and share. Like, uh, let us know your comments below as well. Uh, like you say, you know, football's football. We've got to just send down bad day. Office. Hey, Neil. Neil. Yeah. Win at Bolton next week and we'll be Champions League in five years. You know, <laughs> you know what it's like. You know what it's like. <laughs> I know what it's like. We'll be up here. <laughs> be automatic promotion. Yeah. <laughs> One thing left to say, you Reds.